today I'm going to show you how to do one of the A-level required practicals, which is testing for antibiotic resistance in bacteria. Because we're working with live bacteria, throughout this practical, we have to use what's known as aseptic technique. These are, are techniques that we use to firstly prevent our culture that we're going to grow from becoming contaminated with bacteria from the lab, but also to prevent contamination of the lab and myself with bacteria from the culture, which could potentially be quite dangerous. Even though we have E. coli in a liquid broth here, we're actually, we cannot be 100% sure what's growing in there. It could have become contaminated, we've had mutations, things like that. So we always treat microbes as though they are potentially deadly. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is to actually take a sterile Petri dish. You're going to turn it upside down and put your initials and date the base. This is standard practice because in a microbiology lab, you wouldn't be sealing the lids. And if the lids go missing, you need to know what's growing on there. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're actually going to take some liquid agar, which is, it's molten agar that's been kept in a water bath. It's about 40 degrees at the minute. Okay, so there is molten liquid agar, and we're going to inoculate it, which means we're going to add bacteria from our sample here using aseptic technique. Okay, so first thing you're going to do, and you can do this with a micro pipette if you have them with sterile tip, we're actually going to add one centimetre cubed of our broth bacterial suspension to the molten agar. Now I'm going to today use a sterilised Pasteur pipette. Now, the tip of the pipette that's going to go into the agar must remain sterile, so we don't touch that. So you can open the other end and we can actually put the pipette filler on there. Okay, we're now ready to go. So we carefully remove the foil. This should now be completely sterile. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take the lid from our bottle and we're going to hold it in our little finger just like this. Microbiologists have a special little finger that they use for this. Okay, we're going to put the flame on hot and we're going to flame the top. Now this is to kill off any bacteria that might be on dust that's getting into the neck of the bottle there. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to withdraw exactly one centimetre cubed of bacterial suspension. Okay, I'm going to reflame the bottle top and I'm going to replace the lid. Okay, we've now finished with that. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same with the bottle of agar. You have to make sure your agar is not too hot here, otherwise it will kill the bacteria, but then you don't want it so cold that it starts to set. And we are now going to dispense the bacterial culture into the bottle of agar, reflame the lid, the neck of the bottle and replace it. Now straight away, we're going to dispose of this Pasteur pipette into Vercon. Okay, I'll move that out of the way and that's that section done. Now, we need to now make sure the bacteria is carefully mixed in with the agar. You don't want to shake it because it will, you know, form lots of bubbles, become a bit frothy. So we're just going to gently roll it. And then the next thing we're going to do, make sure your petri dish is the right way up now. We're actually going to open the neck of that bottle. We're going to flame it. And then we're going to carefully lift the lid and we're going to pour in the molten agar. And you'll see it spread over the base of the plate. Okay, we can now replace the lid and this is ready to now be sterilised. Okay, now the next thing we have to do, you've got to leave your agar exactly where it is now to set. Now I'm going to just move that very gently to one side because I've actually prepared one earlier. So in the bottom of this Petri dish, we actually have agar, which we'll have in it already. I've already inoculated this with bacteria. Okay, so when this grows, we'll get what's called a bacterial lawn. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to actually transfer an antibiotic test disc. Okay, and if you have a look here, this is what they look like. They arrive, okay, and uh, you can see it's actually a piece of kind of filter paper with little circles on little discs, and each disc is impregnated with a different antibiotic. 
Now I've got to use aseptic technique again to do this. So this time I'm going to use some forceps. They're in ethanol and I'm going to just flame them to sterilise them. So they've got some ethanol on them. Put those in your Bunsen burner flame and you should see the ethanol there burning. And this will sterilise the forceps. Okay, I'm now going to carefully, and it's a little bit tricky this because they're well attached. I'm going to carefully remove one of my antibiotic test discs. There we go. And I'm just going to gently open the lid, the Petri dish, and place that on the agar and just gently press it down with the forceps. Okay, and then that's that job. We now have to re-sterilise the forceps because obviously they've been in contact with the agar, which is contaminated with bacteria. Okay, I've sterilised the forceps, we can put those down and we've finished with those. Okay, now then, the next thing we must do at this stage, leave it a, little, a few minutes to sort of make sure that the, uh, the test strip has there sort of st stuck to the agar and then you can turn it upside down and we need to use some sticky tape to actually fasten the lid on. Now this is a safety precaution for a school lab, which you wouldn't have to do if you were in a professional microbiology lab. But it's really important that we actually seal the lid, not all the way round, but with a cross of sticky tape to ensure that the lid doesn't fall off while the plates are being incubated. So if you put a strip one way and a strip the other way, okay, so a little cross, Okay, and that seals the lid on. Now this should be placed in an incubator at 20 degrees C in the school lab uh, because we don't use higher temperatures because we do not want to encourage the growth of pathogens. So temperatures around 37 degrees are not allowed. So 20 degrees um, C for about 48 hours and you should be able to see the results. Now I have got one I made earlier here. It's slightly tricky to see, but you, you know, if you zoom in there, you can actually see that around some of the little discs of antibiotic, there are some zones of clearing or growth inhibition. This is where the different antibiotics have actually diffused, and remember that word diffusion is important, they've diffused into the agar jelly, and they've actually prevented the growth of the bacteria there in the lawn. Okay, you can see that much more clearly on the photograph I started with, which is from... This looks like a more of a professional microbiology lab. This is what's called blood agar. It's designed to grow human pathogens. You can see here where the bacteria have formed a lawn. That's the creamy areas. And you can see the antibiotic discs and the zones of clearing around them where the antibiotic has diffused into the agar and inhibited the growth of the bacteria or even killed the bacteria. Pretty obviously, by measuring the diameter of the zones of clearing, we can work out which antibiotic is the most effective at preventing the growth of this bacteria.